true limited time offer. So yep. what's really funny is that they were they're upfront about the devaluation of the currency, whereas most governments today are doing it very subtly through the printing press and over time you see that this stuff is buying less and less and it creeps up on them. Yeah, and that's a wealth transfer that people can't see. And one of the things that is going on right now in the world is everybody is involved in the greatest wealth transfer in history right now, without exception. There's nobody that's not participating in this, uh, whether they know it or not, or whether they want to or not. If they don't know it, or they don't want to participate in it, it means that wealth is going to be transferred away from them, because the dollars in their pocket, the dollars in their savings account, are going to be devalued by the government just creating more currency and transferring that wealth away from them to the government through inflation. And so That's people still in the, silent tax that you can't see called inflation. And so people in the United States, which have seen their currency erode somewhat, but then Canadians who have a fairly strong currency, but I suppose in your view, they shouldn't be too smug either. Uh, the Canadian dollar is backed by the U.S. dollar. Yeah. <laughs> That's the system that the Bretton Woods uh, standard put us on, the Bretton Woods system. Uh, all the other currencies on the planet are backed by the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. And uh, the U.S. dollar, uh, one day, will be worthless. I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's no currency that I can identify in monetary history that's been able to put up with the levels of abuse that we're giving the U.S. dollar today without a major currency crisis happening, some huge devaluation. And uh, that will happen. And uh, when it does, uh, the people that are holding precious metals uh, will have massive amounts of purchasing power transferred toward them. The people that are holding paper assets especially cash and bonds, mm -hmm. are going to see massive amounts of wealth transferred away from them. They're going to lose purchasing power. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's an ongoing process. But, you know, I, sh I showed charts. Uh, many of the viewers here are, are going to be familiar with the Dow-Gold ratio. But I showed charts where I uh, divide uh, the price of, I, I divide a whole bunch of different items by the price of gold to see what that thing costs in the price of gold. Or I use a single family median price home priced in barrels of oil, mm -hmm. or bushels of wheat, or tons of iron, pounds of copper, or shares of the Dow. And uh, when you do this, you see that there's these uh, waves and cycles where everything goes from overvalued to undervalued to overvalued to undervalued, and the thing that you're measuring it with is doing the exact opposite wave. Uh, and uh, right now, we're that gold and silver are done with their down wave. They are still undervalued tremendously. They're going up. And they should, you know, gold should buy four or five times more real estate someday if we don't have a currency crisis. And it's just uh, the last type of cycle of the 70s bull market repeating. I don't think it's going to be that way. I think it's going to be much larger. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, I was on the primetime news and they asked, uh, um, what they said, some analysts are predicting that gold could go to $2,000. What's your opinion? I said, it's ridiculous. It's more likely to go past $10,000 than it is to stop at $2,000. And, uh, you know, back in uh, 2004, I started my target price for gold was $6,000 an ounce back then, when famous gold analysts were predicting $1,350, $1,500. Uh, and it was considered crazy. Uh, but somebody in, 19, in 1971, when gold was 35 bucks an ounce, if they had predicted, the people that were saying it could go to 100 bucks, they should be locked up in a rubber room. You know, these people were considered lunatics. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of ec economists were predicting that gold would go down because now it's not going to have monetary demand. We're not going to be using it as money anymore once we end the Bretton Woods system. So. Uh, it should fall once it becomes free trading. And, you know, gold didn't just go past $100, it went to $850. <laughs> it astounded everybody. It went up 24 times its original price. Well, the, previous, the, the bottom that we got in two, 1999, 2001, double bottom, was $250. Times 24, if you apply the last bull market to it, is $6,000. Uh, if you take the expansion of the currency supply up until uh, then, back in 2004, that landed at about 6,200 bucks an ounce. And then uh, the other, uh, there was one other way that I measured it, and I can't remember exactly what it was. Oh, I think it was, uh, 
the pre-Reagan CPI that uh, John Williams of Shadow Government Statistics had put together, when you used that back then, it pointed to about 6,200 bucks an ounce. Well, not and yesterday. So you had three factors all landing on the same price. Uh -huh. But now my target is 15,000. It's a moving target. Uh -huh. Because what I've noticed is that in 1934 and in 1980, gold rose until the, the will of the public and the free markets bid the price of gold up until the value of the gold held at the treasury equals the value of all the circulating medium, which is the uh, dollars, the paper dollars that the Federal Reserve uh, and the treasury create that are circulating, plus outstanding revolving credit, because when you uh, make a credit card charge, you're expanding the currency supply of the planet. The bank isn't loaning you anything, they're creating a book entry. You just created dollars. But the merchant you're paying it to his checking account can't tell the difference between uh, your credit dollars that you just created or cash, if you're paying him cash. Those dollars stay in circulation until somebody saves them up and pays down credit card debt. So if you look at all credit card debt outstanding, which was just under a trillion dollars, uh, it takes over $15,000 an ounce right now to cover the same, if history repeated, and it just covered the same portion of the currency supply that it did in 1980, 1934, and gold has been doing something similar to this hundreds and hundreds of times throughout history. I don't know if it's the exact same process, but something very similar has been going on. I've got uh, money supply and, and uh, the price of gold in the Weimar Republic, and it way outperformed the expansion of the currency supply in the Weimar Republic during that hyperinflation. So it's, it does this accounting every so often, but the opportunity is that there's a lag time. It lay, they, they ramp up the currency supply, and, and people finally catch on to inflation, but gold and silver lie in wait for a while. It's, it's once people really catch on to the, the loss of their purchasing power that they rush back to gold and silver, and they bid the price up until the value of the gold and silver in the country equals the value of the circulating medium. Once that perception starts to change, yeah. then that's when the, I guess things really start happening quickly. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, when gold was over 400 bucks an ounce in, in 19, late 1979 and all through 80, uh, we could have gone back on the gold standard. There was enough gold at the Treasury at that new price to pay out against every dollar printed from George Washington to Jimmy Carter. And that's exactly what had happened in 1934 when uh, uh, they unpegged the dollar from gold for a couple of months and the price of gold rose. In other words, the value of the dollar fell uh, from 1 20th an ounce of gold to 1 35th. So the price of gold went from $20 up to 35 but it was really the dollar being devalued, not gold. Uh, but uh, you have, there are these brief moments in history where the safest asset, the wealth insurance for the last 5,000 years becomes the asset class that has the uh, greatest potential gains 